So here now we see the chest again and uh, there's a skin, we remove the skin and we see the pectoralis major. So here we can clearly see the two heads of the pectoralis major. So there's the sternocostal head, this big one area here. And there's small pe uh, clavicular head because it attached the clavicle. Now note that it doesn't attach to the entire clavicle, so this whole thing here is the clavicle. The clavicular head only attaches to this uh, portion that is closest to the sternum, the first half. The remaining half is attached to, to by the deltoid muscle. The deltoid muscle consists of three components. There's the clavicular component, there's an acromyle component, and the spinous component that attaches the scapula on the back. But uh, anyway, this here is the clavicular head of pectoralis major, and this big area here is the sternocostal head. They both, however, go and attach to the same spot on the humerus of the upper arm bone. Okay. Then this this muscle here, this is the platysma. So this is associated with the muscle of the head, and here it's just been reflected to show the clavicle. And in the back here, you can see the serratus anterior muscles coming along this area here and as you can see they will go underneath the pectoralis major because the pectoralis major really the, covers everything that's in the chest so it covers the pectoralis the serratus anterior and the pectoralis minor that is underneath here we see the thoracic wall and abdominal wall from the side so again the deltoid muscle here and the arm is here then you see the platysma the pectoralis major of course is right here we can't clearly see the difference between clavicular and sternocostal head but clavicular would be up here attached to the clavicle then down here this would be your rectus abdominis muscle, muscle of the abdomen the ones that gives you the six packs the rectus abdominis but uh, you cannot clearly see it because it is covered by that rectus sheath which is a whitish in color here serratus anterior see how it goes up at the top here it's covered by the pectoralis major because the pectoralis major doesn't attach to the ribs at least not the ribs that are in this area only at the costal margins only at the costal cartilages uh, so these guys attaching to ribs would be going underneath the pectoralis major and uh, the pectoralis minor is also beneath the pectoralis major and here is your external oblique muscles you can see external obliques do come out from between the serratus anterior muscles simply because these guys here two attached to the uh, ribs so they have to really share the same ribs and that's why they go like crisscross from uh, across each other so here's a view with the pectoralis major muscle completely removed we can see the manubrium the sternum the xiphoid process the clavicle the acromine of the scapula so this whole area here is the scapula there is the portion the glenoid cavity there's the coracoid process now what you can see is this muscle here, this is the pectoralis minor muscle and uh, the pectoralis minor muscle originates from this coracoid process of the scapula so it originates here and then continues down and attaches to these ribs close to the costal cartilages it's usually attaches to ribs 2 to 5 so somewhere in this area but different books will give you different sites of attachment to the rib but usually it's going to be between the ribs 2 and 5 in this area back here are your serratus anterior muscles as you can see how they attach to one per rib okay so there's one attached to rib 2 there's going to be one attaching to rib 3 and so forth going all the way down to about rib 9 and not to rib 10 11 12 none of those just from about 1 to 9 the serratus anteriors